Ali, I think we need to start at the end. Yeah. Incredible finish. Yeah, that's what happens here at Old Trafford. It's, uh, it's happened so many times before, and uh, of course we had to throw caution to the wind, and um, we got lucky in the end. Yeah, it was a difficult game, wasn't it? Yeah, they're a good team. They're a very, very hard team to beat. They've not lost a game since... Uh, Way, way yeah. before uh, the final, and uh, they played some good teams before as well. It's, it's a difficult one because we're at home, we want to win, but they play so well. Mm. But if we don't, if we don't go and press them, they'll they'll be happy enough sitting off. So yeah, it felt like in the last five ten minutes there might just be something there for you. Just got that little head of steam up. Yeah, you know, sometimes it's not about uh, pass there, pass there. It's the crowd. Stratford End has sucked a few balls yeah, in before. I've said, I've said, I've, I know that, and then uh, that's probably what happens. And when you've got Cristiano on the pitch, you, it's always a chance. Absolutely. I mean, obviously he's involved. He scores the goal. But I would point out Lingard as well. It's a fantastic touch, knowing that Ronaldo's waiting for it. The combination play is terrific. And Jesse was probably not happy, not, uh, not playing more. So of course, but he comes on, uh, comes on, makes makes an impact. That's, yeah. that's what you do when you're a sub uh, at this club. And that's why you brought the main man back, eh? Yeah, that's seriously. He's uh, he's so so good in front of goal, and he he has an impact to, on everyone, the crowd, the players, the, the whole club. How important was tonight for you, for the team, for the crowd? Given the last couple of weeks, difficult couple of weeks for you. Yeah, it, it's it's massive for the for the players, of course, just to win games in this fashion. After we lost the game in Bern in that fashion, it's, uh, it's great. So I'd rather have a win and a defeat than two draws. Yes, and obviously you'll know you're playing Atalanta twice next in yeah. a... It's a difficult group, this. No, they're a good team, again. So uh, every game's hard. You know, this level, you can see results yesterday that you don't really uh, believe when you see them, but that's, that's European football now. The margins are so fine. Sleep a bit easier tonight? No, probably not because the adrenaline, but... Uh, you're on to the Everton game already. Thank you very much. Well done. Cheers, thanks. Looking as Solskjaer has just said there, this was massive for the players, but it was massive for him as well, Owen. Yeah, you see the, the, the emotion on his face. He knows what it means. Obviously, he scored some huge goals for the football club, but this stadium just went, went, went nuts. And I think that's what Cristiano gives you. He gives you hope that, there's, you know, that he can score those big goals. And I just think he gives this team so much confidence. That's why you don't take him off. He looks a bit tired, as Mo said. You know, it was, he had a busy night up there. But you don't take him off because he gives you those moments, which is so special. And as you pointed out before, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has been questioned a lot for his tactics and his substitutions at times. But today, the subs, he got those right. Yeah, he did. I mean, ends up, he did. But as I say, I would have preferred to have seen Jesse Lingard come on earlier. Um, I was thinking, right, Cavani and Lingard have got to come on around the hour mark. Uh, Cavani did, but he also brought uh, Matic on. And I was quite surprised at that. Um, but then he eventually did bring Jesse Lingard on, who is really, you know, riding the crest of a wave at the minute. He's playing so well. Um, and it just gave energy. It gave... It, they just looked more of a team then, I thought. Um, there was a lot more movement up front. Cavani was was outstanding, I thought, when he came on. You know, and it's not necessarily about tactics. And sometimes it's just about pressure. It's about running. It's about getting people off their seats. It's about, you know, dragging your teammates with you. You've got the energy. You've got the impetus when you come on. So you've got to almost lift the game. You've got to make something happen. And I thought Cavani did that. And then, of course, Jesse Lingard at the end was the icing on the cake. He was. And we've got to talk about Villarreal because they were fantastic, actually. And they'll be absolutely gutted that they didn't walk away with anything from this. Yeah, good side. You know, as Oli said there, look, defensively, they're good. They In midfield, they got good experience, good balance in it. Dan Juma was probably the best player on the pitch. You know, if he plays like that, he's going to nick a move, a big move, by the way, because he was almost unplayable. I mean, at times, like I was saying, they had a bit of a, a Mbappe vibe to it, the way he was driven by people, so explosive. He had end product as well. And if it wasn't for David De Gea, United were going to be big trouble in the first half, especially down this left-hand side. There was so much space for Villarreal to get into, but um, yeah, I thought in the end, you know, the, the stadium was able to grab hold of the game and the big players changed it, but Dan Juma put on a show, especially in the first half. We'll be talking about Dan Juma for a while, won't we? I'm sure he's caught the eye of a lot of people. I, yeah, I think there was a couple of people interested before um, and he eventually went to Villarreal, um, but I think there'll be a few big Premier League teams now looking at him. That was a real good performance. He's at a young age, I think he's only 24. 
Uh, he's direct. He can score goals. We saw that at, at Bournemouth and we've seen it already this season. He can create as he did there, especially in the first half. And of course, he made the assist for the goal in the second half. I thought it was a brilliant performance. And, um, and there's not many players, wide players, that are direct, that beat players um, and score a lot of goals. And I think he's one and I'm sure there'll be a lot of people watching that. So how much of a confidence boost then is tonight's result for Manchester United, given the tricky run of fixtures to come? Huge. I mean, look, the, the, the best team outside of Man United in this group is Atalanta, and that's going to be tough, home and away. They play some proper football, so that game could go either way. They're a roller coaster. They're like Leeds, you know, so fixtures they have coming up. You know, Everton have been in terrific form. Leicester, not been at their best, but away, that's a tough fixture. So Liverpool, Tottenham, Atalanta City, I mean, these are really, really tough fixtures. But I think United will rise to the occasion in the big games. And today, that's a huge boost of confidence to win so late. Yeah, we've just seen big game next against Everton. I mean, there's no easy game in the Premier League, but they're back at Old Trafford and they want to give them fans something to celebrate in the Premier League now as well. Oh, definitely, yeah. I mean, that's a great boost for them. It's a relief, actually, to, uh, to get the win. And, uh, and now the Premier League, you know, going to focus on the Premier League again. They've had a good start, but they've had a reasonably easy start. That list that we just saw there, it gets tougher for them. What's that dressing room right now? What's it going to be oh, like? Bouncing. Everybody, yeah. yeah the music <laughs> we play and the lads will be smiling. And that's exactly what, you know, that's, that's what you need as a team. Moments like that can define a season. Right, welcome back to the International Suite. Gerbs has joined us. It's his 49th birthday. He's having the time of his life. <laughs> How did you feel when Ronaldo scored at the end? Oh, my days. Honest to God. I know it's my birthday, yeah, but I'm so glad we got Ronaldo back. I can't even tell you how I feel because, honest to God, if the guy never scored, I would have cried. No joke, honest to God. You know what, Viva Ronaldo. He's, he's a living legend, goal machine. Messi, Messi who? Who's Messi? <laughs> Who's, come on, guys. Who's Messi, man? Viva Ronaldo. Come on, United. Come on, you Reds. Were you confident, I can tell, were you confident that we would get a winning goal because it was the 42nd minute plus some seconds? Listen, for United, you always have to have the confidence. You always have some confidence. But at the end of the day, I have to admit, I was a bit nervous, I was a bit apprehensive, thinking, do we, don't we? Because this is my birthday, man. I don't want to ruin my birthday, but I'm so glad, I'm so happy. I feel sorry for, actually, I feel happy for him because he's driving me home. My nephew over there. My nephew. Come on, nephew. Aaron, I'm so glad. I don't know, it's for his sake, otherwise he would have got it in his head. All the way down. Excited about the drive home? He's happy well, about yeah, about, at least it's a win. But well, I'm not happy about the chat that I'm going to get off him. Um, no, good gamer, good game. Enjoyed the watch. It's the first time here, so it's a good experience. To be, to be honest, we really need that win. Especially, you know, after after everything's happened with us, young boys, you know, fair enough. You know, you can't, you, you know, Lingard, fair enough, that's a mistake. But for, we need to win a trophy, simple as, we need to win a trophy. Do you know what I mean? Love you guys, love you. Sure. Number one, Mr. Singh. <laughs> you still going? You're still going. You're still going. You're still going. Oh, we're done, we're done. All the best, yeah. <laughs> love you, man. Love you. Okay. Thank you so much. Happy birthday. We're going to leave now, because at some point we have to come off air. Okay. Uh, Danny, final thoughts from you after all come of on, that. Danny boy. Danny boy. Nah, Danny yeah, boy. wasn't, obviously. Yeah. I, feel, I feel the same as you. Emotional. Um, well, great win. Tipped off by the Dry Ronaldo. Brilliant. Finish. Good night. I don't believe you do feel the same. He does. I think you're on different emotional we scales. Express it different. Yeah. Alcohol levels as well. Yeah, okay, okay. okay. Uh, right, we are going to head back to the studio to Sunny and Wes. By the way. Cheers, Sammy Boy and Danny Boy, for uh, <laughs> that uh, and some enthusiastic fans there in the international suite. Um, but we've been celebrating a lot because of that last-minute winner, but there's still a lot of work to do in the group, Wes, isn't there? That three points gives us a little bit more leeway, but we still probably need three more wins if we want to top the group. Yeah, and most of them hopefully come at home. You know, you... We always talk about if you can win your home games and maybe win one away, you, you, you know, you, you sort of through or maybe draw one away. So we needed that today, especially coming off the weekend as well. But we would have been in a really bad position 
Um, if we didn't get three points, uh, you know, it would have made it very difficult. There was no room for error um, in any any of the other games. So, great comeback. You know, we need to still start better. You know, it wasn't perfect. But mentally, you know, an attitude of the lads, you've got to say the second half, you know, they went at it and, and tried to tried to get the win. And, you know, fortunately for us, we, we, we got through it. And is that the perfect tonic just before the visit of Everton here, Lou? Because after two games at Old Trafford without a goal and um, some disappointing 1-0 defeats, that just changes oh, the yeah. landscape. It, it would have been doom and gloom, Solly. Had we not won tonight, without a doubt, the place would have been down. But we've got the, the all-important win. Got to say, Ben mentioned uh, Jesse's part in the, the winning goal. Yeah. Interesting to see it again because he, he sort of slid in and the boy, ball ended up getting poked to Ronaldo. And I think it was Jesse that poked it, it was, to yeah. Ronaldo. So he's played a part, as he normally does. Bring him on, he'll do something. He's come on before, scored a goal this season. And he's a good sub to have. He'll say he wants to get in the team, yeah. but uh, he's a brilliant sub to have. Yeah, good substitutions by Oli, actually, uh, to go and win the game. Got a feeling those fans are going to be there for quite a while celebrating that last minute winner. Um, it's been another intriguing week of Champions League football. Let's just quickly run you through the results from um, two more big nights of action. The standout results on Tuesday are, of course, that unbelievable win uh, for Sheriff in Real Madrid, the uh, Moldovan champions, causing one of the biggest upsets in the modern era, that's for sure. And uh, City lost the uh, El Gasico battle with PSG. Um, as for Wednesday nights, um, the big shock to all of us here in the studio is Chelsea actually um, going down to Juve. Juve struggling domestically, not in the best of form. Um, Chelsea looks so strong, but that's uh, back-to-back 1-0 defeats now for the uh, supposedly all-conquering Thomas Tuchel and his team. Um, the other game in our group earlier uh, today was the Atalanta Young Boys match, which finished at 1-0 Atalanta. So they are the main of oh, Benfica Barcelona. I, I should pick that out as well, by the way. Uh, Barcelona in disarray, it seems, at the moment. Um, struggling under Koeman, aren't they? Quick look at our group then, the Group F table. Atalanta lead the way, four points. They, of course, drew VRL 2-2 in their opening game. 1-0 uh, winners today. Young boys um, second, courtesy of that victory over ourselves, who are in third with VRL, uh, propping it up. But that looks close, doesn't it, Lou? That is a tight group. This could be a group where everyone's around the 7-8-9 point mark. It, it might be all down to the final round of matches. Uh, shouldn't be, Mark. When you look at the teams in the group, Manchester United, the name of Manchester United stands out, doesn't it? But of course, we, we made a big mess in, um, against the Swiss side, young boys, and that was a shock result for everyone because if, you, if you've seen young boys play home or away, you, you didn't really rate them as a team with any power, strength, any great players in the team, but they managed to get the result. And we had to win tonight, and fortunately, the lads have come back from being behind. And, uh, and they've done it, given us a chance of... Wouldn't be surprised now if we won the group, but that team surprised me tonight. That they're, they're a lot better than I thought they would be. I know they've, they've done well in Europe in the last two or three years, but still here at Old Trafford, we normally run over the top of teams, beat them easily. But again, not tonight. They were, they were up for it in the first half, without a doubt, the best side. That's their first defeat of the season, to be fair, Wes. Yeah. Nine games in, and they're yet to taste defeat until that match. Yeah, let's, match. let's be honest, they'll be disappointed with that. Um, oh, yeah. Ben mentioned it, all the chances they had. You know, they should have easily scored two, maybe three in the first half. Um, but that's the thing about Old Trafford, you know, if you don't take your chances, um, you certainly know the second half's going to be different. And we kept in there, and we kept battling out. We, we scored a fantastic goal, and I did think from that point, the tide changed a little bit and we always had control, maybe. They still had a couple of opportunities if, if it weren't for David, but um, you know, that, that same passion still got still flows through the lads and you know, never give up attitude and we, we managed to get the, the 